I can see from the socials you've had some gigs and there's a lot of frisbee throwing going around. Anything? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the frisbee hey, throwing, sorry. that's really sort of most of what we do. <laughs> but yeah, I think you were right. You were, we really do like frisbee pretty much every rehearsal session that we, we had a chance. We'll have like a little frisbee break. But um, as you rightly said, yeah, we had that live um, version of Hammer and Tom coming right at the end of the year, which, as you know, is kind of like a, a, a counterintuitive kind of time to release something. But we always sort of saw it as a bit of a kind of like tack on a bit of a like celebration of hammer and tong more so than this big other thing that we were going to push but since then like later in that year we got back into the studio and recorded two tracks and one of those is the one that's just come out down my mm -hmm. neck and the other one is the next one coming um yeah yeah so it's mainly been that just like playing a few gigs here and there where they come about um i'd say our processes as a band have probably improved a lot so like okay. originally or like the hammer and tongue it, it was artwork or if it was the mix or if it was jobs to delegate it's been a lot i'd say it's been a lot quicker so like uh the artwork was decided on within like maybe an hour and a half two hours of chatting rather than a week that the hammer and tongue one was uh the mix we maybe had one or two notes for lewis who engineered the song instead of hammer and tongue yeah, which i think true. went back five or six times yeah, yeah, probably not that many. We've become more yeah, efficient yeah. as as we've gone, which you know it just means that we're developing it as as a group and as a band. So, I think that's a big part of it. As you mentioned, Deb, it's like it is like kind of a workflow thing, and and just because we don't we don't do our all our own mixes and all that sort of stuff, but mm -hmm. all the rest of it, the album art, like all the visual stuff, all the write ups, and and all that stuff is us. So it's we've probably got better at at as you said delegating, but also. Um, Communicating. Just communicating, but also just like the process of, of if I'm going to like pitch an album artwork idea or whatever, um, I think we've all got better at this idea of sort of showing more options and, and it's sort of like not going or like putting all your um, eggs in one basket kind of thing. And, and mm -hmm. that sort of seems to help the flow of things. And mm. we're all pretty like now that we've we've got a bit of material in the bank, it's been easier to kind of keep the ball rolling. Um, and yeah, so that's why we're kind of keeping to the plan on getting in the studio again soon and all that sort of stuff. Okay, cool. So how long is your life set now? Just, uh, you know, out of curiosity. 45 probably. Uh, if we added in every single song that we have made, we, we would be probably touching on 45, 50 minutes. Oh, wow. Actually. But that's a we could, probably, studio. we could probably go longer than that, I reckon. Just yeah, like with the odd cover thrown in as well. Yeah, we, we probably would be able to do like an hour if we really had to but yeah. but yeah you, you said you you've been reaching out to community radio a bit more that's your like marketing strategy as well yeah more or less i think just like having discovered that world a bit more and as i said before finding some presenters that like really um sort of champion the music that we like and things mm -hmm. similar um so they've, they've definitely been ones we've been targeting but also just like community radio here but we've We've sent it off to a few other places um, around the world, and we've had a we've had a little bit of a like a little win in New Zealand. One of the little community radio stations there threw down my neck on um, regular rotation, so that's been playing there, which is nice. Okay, we've um, definitely had a fair bit more success with community radio with down my neck um, after you know uh, hammer and tong that sort of thing as well. So there is a group progression and it is building slowly, but you know it's it's been good. Okay, good to hear it. Yeah. Um, anything else that has worked for you? Like, have you come up with some kind of, you know, um, miraculous marketing strategy that has worked for you and you never thought it would? <laughs> I mean, I think frisbees are going to be. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that would have been easier. <laughs> yeah. You say Down my neck. And um, I don't know if I saw that correctly on, on Instagram as well, but the riff, or I don't know if I can call it the riff, like the melody of the main hook was kind of created on the piano. Was it you, Ben? Yes. Uh, why piano? Oh, well, that that is truly a great question because <laughs> honestly, like I am by no means a great piano player or just melodic player in general I've, I've stuck with drums all my life um and I do 
like to sort of like fiddle around and just play random things, you know. Uh, I, this riff was written back in 2018, the start of 2018. Mm-hmm. So we've had it, we've had it for well over five years now. Um, and I was actually, uh, uh, it was at one of my old jobs where I was teaching and it was actually in between students. So I actually had like sort of a 15 minute break in between drum mm-hmm. students. And that's where um, I sort of, there was a piano in the room and I sat down and just had a bit of a, a play around. And then I came up with a little riff that I liked and then uh, I would voice memo it. And that's kind of what I had. And I think Cal and I met up uh, sort of two, three days later, that sort of thing, just for a little bit of a jam. And I showed him the riff um, and we sort of had a bit of a play around with it. And uh, I sort of had like a this main riff and kind of a chorus progression as well. And yeah. and uh, we sort of went uh, between the two. And um, and then for a long time after that, the, the riff got buried and we, we didn't really touch it again for a couple of years, really up until, you know, Crystalline's started up again with Devon on board you know uh, because we had other projects and stuff going on as well so I'm glad that we have got it to a point now where you know it's a fully fleshed out song and people enjoy it you know it's yeah, it, me on writing as well so cool song sure. yeah so yeah, now so maybe, I'll maybe... Say as well Ben is an excellent MIDI writer a lot of yeah the songs that he writes is completely like MIDI but I think yeah. adding for why the piano, I don't know if Ben's the same, but a lot of the songs that even I write on on bass, I don't write them on bass, I write them on piano or guitar, because it's just a lot fresher of a thing to look at rather than being limited by what you've learned mm-hmm. on your one instrument. You're completely going in a bit blind. You'll come up with a lot of things. Yeah, Because I think a few of the riffs and potentially what's coming out later was written by Ben as well, also on piano. Yeah. Okay. I think it's, it's a bit of a collaborative, like... I would come up with sort of like one idea and then it would be a collaborative effort with the mm-hmm. rest of us because you know, I, I I might have one idea and then Cal might tack onto that idea with something else and or, or um uh, sort of play with my idea a, li- a little bit to make it sort of more his style of playing on guitar and same with Dev on bass as well, you know, that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, the stuff that I write is malleable. It, well, mm-hmm. it does sort of chop and change a little bit, which is, which is great. You know? Okay. It's so five years, ago. yeah, but five years ago, wow. So just the, tr- the kind of like a, a cheeky question. So that video that is, I mean, the reel that is on Instagram with someone playing, you know, on the piano and pressing the keys. No, that is, that is, is truly, that video was in the moment. And wow. I, I recorded, you know, I, I may have not voice memoed it. I might have, you know, recorded it through video just so I could see what my hands were doing so I could write yeah. it down later that sort of thing so yeah. it was truly an in the moment you know this is the first time i'm playing it you wow know, i reckon the way that you can tell that we don't fake those because we've done we've got a couple of like some of these riffs and stuff are are old like hammer and tong is from a sort of similar period and um like i think the way that it's, it's pretty obvious that we haven't faked it is just that people's hair is like very different and like i i'm sort of in like skinny jeans and stuff that i would never wear now and this is you don't have a beard no no this is like all these sort of like visual cues that show that they they've like literally eight years mm. old but um yeah no it's real it's real and, and i document everything yes. as well oh wow okay so, yeah. all right so that's any, any show we play i'll i'll have it recorded or any rehearsal that we do i will have it recorded you know just to, if there's a little like sort of nugget of gold in there that we we could use later down the track. So I do document as much as I can when it comes to music at least. And, um, next question is about the structure of the song. Why is it so different from Hammer and Tong? I think it's a much more, we've leaned further into like some metal influences, I think with this one, there's more sort of double kick and stuff, but it, the whole thing is is based around Ben's riff from that video. And um, I think that, as you said, like we had that and we had the chorus chords and then kind of the blanks around that are things that we wrote like separately. Um, but yeah, it starts with that big shuffle groove that Ben does on the drums. And then Dev and I kind of like do our sort of intro noise. And then we all come in hard on the riff and we kind of tried to, I think one of those things that's happened that a bit in Chris Lanes is um, with me kind of like fighting against singing and playing at the same time, 
um, we've ended up with like a call and response kind of verse. Mm -hmm. So the, the instruments play and then I sing and the instruments play again kind of thing. And um, that's just kind of like an organic way that that happens. But it's also, I think, a cool thing about the verse. Um, but yeah, it sort of just does that. And we, we do our standard sort of verse, chorus, verse, chorus thing. And um, then it ends up in this big kind of fuzzy guitar solo, which we have to sort of credit um, our friend who engineered and mixed and mastered at Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> me, apparently. Thank me. I'd like to thank the manufacturer of the Frisbee that we have. <laughs> uh, no, but he, he made that, so that solo sound really, really thick and on fire, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think structurally, you know, it is a, it is quite a simple song. You know, if we're, if we're thinking like a standard rock or pop song, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, double chorus out, or double chorus out, you know, it's it's quite a standard structure in terms of songwriting. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Okay. Hmm. And can you tell me a bit more about what the lyrics are? you know, based on or where they, where, where they stem from, so to speak. Yeah, for sure. Um, we, we got to that point with Chris Lynn's where we had a lot of um, songs done instrumentation wise while we were still looking for a singer, as you might remember. Mm -hmm. um, and then when that time came that we decided that I was going to do it, I had to kind of tackle all these songs and, and because um, we were again, like getting ready for a live show. So we had to kind of get it all going like in you know, it a long form kind of show format. And um, I guess it's around that time during like lockdowns and stuff in 2020. I, it's not like a COVID song or anything. It's like got really little to do with that, but obviously just that was like a huge moment for like visibility on, on some of these issues around. Um, yeah. just like police brutality and stuff, particularly in America. But for me, I, I like, I say like in the write up about it, that you know, I, I'm not proud of the fact that I've been pretty like number one naive to a lot of these things, but also like probably actively ignorant at various times when I was like a teenager and stuff and didn't really probably pay any of that much attention. And, and yeah, so like when, when this, the death of, well, the murder of George Floyd happened, that was really like, and again, I'm like, really, I feel very shameful to have been that like that late in my life that I started to wake up to any of this, but um it just like really made me, it was like so confronting and like, how could it not be? But I just was like, I felt so many emotions. I was like so sad, but I was also extremely angry. And um, down my neck, I started to sort of, yeah, get my feelings about that out. But in doing so, like I was realizing so much more about these issues, like on our home front, like things here in Australia mm -hmm. um, and how they're, they're, they're sort of just like have these, um, really similar issues and and there are lines in it that allude more to Australia about um, things being blacker underground and stuff and that, that's sort of more about um, not so much like present day although that is a factor I was sort of commenting more on even just like the history of Australia and sort of like the, the the past that I think it's very and I think it's probably changing if we were kids again today you'd probably learn a lot more about this but I think when we were younger and again, this is not an excuse, but like, I think it was very easy to like kind of ignore a lot of that um, and kind of just, just go about your life in a privileged way that the three of us probably have. I mean, obviously Debbie, you, you spent like a lot of your early life overseas, but from here, but yeah, it's sort of about that. It's about me rejecting my ignorance and, and sort of like looking at it properly <laughs> for the first time. And also then just like, appealing for I don't know the, the people that abuse their positions of power to I guess like look at their like morals and and why mm. how could you let this sort of thing happen how could you perpetrate this and um yeah it's sort of just about that I guess okay and I think you know it's uh it's good to be honest about it and I, I'm sure you're not the only one who has come to this conclusion I you know I I'm not Australian but I follow this topic as well and I know it's a very difficult conversation in your country the the message in this song is is probably a bit more direct uh rather mm -hmm. than you know, sort of reading between the lines or whatever um but that's kind of what we wanted to go for is that uh hammer and tong was very much sort of tongue-in-cheek you know the message behind the song uh, whereas we wanted to uh 
sort of go down a much more serious line with this one. And that's that's thanks to Cal and what what he's written about. So and the music conveys that as well. Just tell me how many TVs did you have to smash making that video and how many plants were harmed um, making of it? <laughs> one thing. Yeah, and it wasn't a real plant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. yeah, that was the, the last take that the where he destroyed the TV. So all of them were a bit more restrained. And then it was five or six o'clock and we were like, okay, just fuck it up. And then that was we better get the last one in. There. Yeah. 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 Okay. It was like full destruction mode. Uh, and see, and that was one of my questions as well, because, you know, this looks like a one take video. So the question is whether it was. We could, we could like not reveal the truth, but if it, to be perfectly honest, there is, there is one cut. The rest of it is all, we had always planned it to be one, but um, just the performance that we had in the intro of one of them was, was the most strong. Um, and then we kind of, we tacked that on. Well, I say we, our, our director, Tyree, who yeah. edited the, the thing, um, he pulled it together with like that last take that where it was the most rambunctious kind of thing, but just with a slightly different, the first shot where, where the protagonist Jim is on his own um, before it cuts to where we are, which I don't want to reveal exactly where the cut is because now you'll see it. <laughs> but The only um, reason I'm asking you is because I actually, it was also in Melbourne, I participated in a video shoot that was meant to be a one take video. And I remember vividly how many times we needed to run through it. And, you know, like everybody thought it was perfect. And then the director is like, no, sorry, here you can see whatever once again. And I'm like, I'm going to throw up in a second. We were there all day. So... <laughs> You know, I mean, I'm just trying to say, you know, because the concept is really interesting, but I can imagine it's super hard to achieve, you know, because there's a lot of elements that have to be aligned. So like the actor, you guys as well. And, you know, the, the fact that he doesn't trip over something, you know, the director when he moves the camera and stuff. So all those little details. So yeah, what I think is probably a more interesting little fact is there's three people stood behind the camera the whole time. So there's a photographer taking photos of drawing. And then the director was pretty much hugging the camera guy. Yeah. So I was very impressed that we didn't manage to get anyone else in shot. Yeah. Yeah. That was, this that was very wild. Nice. Yeah. I saw okay. also on Instagram, you did like an ad looking for people to participate in the video. Is that correct? Was it for this one? Yeah, this it was. Yeah. That was actually for, not so much for that lead role. That was actually mm -hmm. like cast. So I'd probably just start this whole chat. We engaged we, we sort of knew we wanted to do a video for this next one for a while. We engaged a guy called Tyree who Ben and I went to school with. Um, and we've known him since he, I think he came like when you came. So like when you, when you were like Prep six years six. old. Yeah. Um, so it's been, you know, what, like 22 years of knowing him. But we probably haven't seen him for, for 10 years, really. Um, except very like fleetingly. But he... We, we kind of had a night here all together, just sort of showing some of our favorite videos and stuff. And without like a huge amount of idea of what we were going to do, um, except I just sort of wanted to, I think the only real like thing that we had in mind that was that we didn't want to explicitly um, actually like show anything police related or anything like that, just because it felt a bit too like literal um, to what it's about. But yeah, we kind of just, we showed a whole lot of videos and, and there was a lot of them that kind of through line was like a kind of freak out dance. Um, like someone just sort of like solo on camera that was like kind of losing it and, and going off chops. And um, yeah, Tyree kind of like pulled it all together. Um, he he wrote the sort of, uh, we wouldn't call it like a screenplay. Or, yeah, he wrote the treat. treat yeah. Um, and and sort of he went to the the effort of sort of choreographing it, and he cast the actor, which uh, as I said, he they found him on like a kind of casting hall thing, and um, they did full on like rehearsals and stuff. It was a full on, as I say, choreographed sort of movement. Um, and then yeah, there was there was going to be like a sort of um, extras element to it with mm -hmm. with uh, like friends and family. Um, and that's what that post was about. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But it just turned out we, we ended up filming it on a on a Thursday during the day, just because that's how it worked out. And um, it's hard to obviously get people during like a work a work day, so we ended up scrapping that element of it. But 
yeah, so it was, there's a lot of credit to be handed to Tari Aspinall um, about all that. But yeah, we filmed it. I, I can't actually remember what it's called, but it was like Trav and Down my neck. Of, of where? <laughs> where? Where was it? Where was it exactly? Travancore. Travancore. Underneath the Tullamarine Freeway. Yeah. Near the big sticks. It's a big, the big chip. highway. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's a big highway that leads out into the north of the city. That's sure it's the airport. Though. Yeah, towards Melbourne towards Airport. That way. Yeah. yeah. And, you guys um, are laughing, but there's going to be like scavenger hunts now, like trying to find that place. I guarantee you. <laughs> yeah. Nobody knows. This is the kind of like a cool element because I remember when I was working in, in um, Jesus, in Thomastown, yeah? And I was going from where I was living in Richmond to Thomastown with the uh, train line. And once I was passing by and I'm like, you know, it was somewhere uh, close to Thornbury and like close to the Croxton Park and stuff, but, you know, by the tram lines. It, so train lines and I'm like this looks so familiar it looks like it was from slowly slowly's video and then I kind of you know filmed it and I put that on Instagram and like is that right slowly slowly and they answered me said exactly so you know this is just like a nice kind of element so yeah that was the only the only aspect that we had that we actually said we wanted so it came from Ben like the location but it was like really cool if we filmed here did I? You sure did. Uh, what was... about the props? Like, um, where did you get them? Were they like from your house and like you don't miss that TV? It was an old one or, you know? That was the deal. That was mostly marketplace. Um, there was a few props that we couldn't <clears throat> damage because they were like peoples that we knew. <laughs> um, like the director's brother and stuff had, he provided the lamp and, and other stuff. But armchair. Yeah, the armchair. But all the rest of it was fair game. So we kind of, the thing that we probably haven't mentioned is that just while that last take was the biggest destruction, it certainly was, there was destruction every time. So like yeah. we had to reset the set every time. So Rich would, Rich the actor, um, Richard Muek would flip the ta- the coffee table every time and he'd like throw the plant. And um, There was a lot of like non-alcoholic beer sprayed everywhere. Like all of our equipment kind of got sticky and dirty and, yeah, right. It was a big cleanup to be done after that, but yeah. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, also I wanted to ask how many cans of beer were, you know, like squashed in the making of, of the video? A lot of beer. A lot. Yeah. We had to start reusing <laughs> cans. Yeah, that's true, <laughs> actually. Yeah. I think there was 12 already crushed cans and then he went through about another 12 of drinking cans. Yeah, it was certainly a lot. Yeah. yeah. It was about a case of beer. <laughs> but it wow. wasn't real beer. <laughs> yeah okay okay now let's talk about because you also mentioned that that having the video kind of um maybe caused a different reaction or maybe you had more interest i don't know how how do you feel about it so having the video definitely helps when you promote a song from your perspective now i'd say so because we've made a lot of like as you've probably seen on the instagram a lot of extra content sort of for the run-up for it and then going forward there's a it's nice to harken back to something that's a bit more digestible for everyone that for some reason you refuse to use streaming services there's actually something to watch mm-hmm. Devin has taken the liberty to uh, uh, of actually making all the, the content pre-release oh, that hit. no it wasn't me <laughs> <laughs> now no one to take the credit no. so, <laughs> so um, Devin would make all like those little like teaser trailers and that sort of thing um, yeah. pre-release to the song. So anything that you're seeing on Instagram is generally um, what Devin has put together and, and made. And yeah, yeah. Can't fool us all, it's blacker. Okay, so look, this was supposed to be like a short check-in and we've been speaking for 45 minutes already. I knew, I knew it. Yes, yes. And, and Cal is like, no, we don't have anything, to, like not much to say about this song. Yeah, 45 minutes later, here we are. Anyways. Was a so, chat, but yeah. We, 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 we've definitely got much better with interviews, uh, I feel like. I feel like this conversation has been much more sort of like... Flowing, it, yeah. Until now, it was great. Yeah, it was fantastic <laughs> until now. It's been... It's been flowing really well. Yeah, and I'm glad to hear it. So have you had many interviews then since uh, August? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that was better from last August. Last time. The sample size is not huge. It's sort okay. of the Aratong one and this one. And this is right up there. But, you know, as a band where you, are, where you stand now, let's say if we check in within the next nine months, right? So what would you like to have done in that period? Would you- 
for me, it's definitely a lot more gigs. I think that's probably the one thing we're lacking as a band. And I think as that's like the to the point Callum touched on earlier is finding the right bands and maybe we need we as a band need to stop being so like picky on who we do shows with and just mm-hmm. throw the hat in the ring and just do whoever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's more so where I'm gonna do. Yeah, I think gigging's a big part of it. And yeah. Would you say being EP? I think that like a larger I'll let you speak to it, but something that we're we're keen on is is taking on a larger um, body of work doing like sort of a four yeah four track ep probably yeah oh. i've definitely spent uh, i've definitely sort of like sunk my teeth into a lot more writing um this Same. year um you know I, i've been writing uh the the most i have since covid uh which has been which has been great and you know callum did touch on before that you know we want to be back in the studio pretty soon so we've started to sort of develop a plan what's going to happen for the rest of the year not so much like shows, uh, that sort of thing. Um, I mean, I, I'm the same as these boys here that mm-hmm. I, I would love to be doing more shows on top of. Uh, but, you know, in terms of like release, uh, you know, we, we do have sort of a little bit of a plan for what's going to happen for the rest of the year and, you know, rough like months when we're going to record, when we're going to release, mm-hmm. that sort of thing, which, which has been which has been good. So, um, you know, Callum did mention like uh, a larger body of work and that's, possible that that's the thing that we're, we're sort of working towards mm-hmm. so uh, and just sort of like having uh, a few more songs fleshed out and written so we do have more material for when we play live as well But just going back to that frisbee throwing, if you guys do it as a, like the pre-gig kind of ritual, it's going to be hard to achieve. Like you imagine you put that on your kind of, you know, rider, like we need a field to throw frisbee before we play. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. If if Crystallines as a, as a band, as an entity were to fail, you know, we'll, we'll join a uh, ultimate frisbee team. I, think we <laughs> yeah. I reckon there's potential there. These two are pretty good throws. I mean, like <laughs> Devin has just like this beautiful technique. And you're actually very consistent as well. I'm all right. So I, I feel like <laughs> if we put some more time into it, there could be a professional outcome in it for us, perhaps. You should have your own frisbee lines with the Crystalline's logo on it. Then just you know, pair up with oh, the. Yeah. That's an idea. Hey, that's a merch line. These yeah. things yeah. are in. Yeah, and now yeah. since I since I've now said it, I want ten percent because my the idea was mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, okay. we'll send a contract. <laughs> okay, no worries.